Everything's bigger in Texas, so the saying goes, but is it better? Today, we're going to build the Texas U-turn in City Skylines 2, but is it worth building? Let's find out. This interchange is typically designed to allow traffic from one frontage road to cross to the other one-way frontage road, or join the highway on the other side without having to cross traffic twice here and here. These frontage roads typically have development, commercial or office built directly on them. Now, I've been waiting to get this build up for a while. In fact, it was requested quite a while back by a viewer, so sorry it took so long. There are a couple of main use cases for this build. The first and most commonly found reason, as I said earlier on, is to allow traffic crossing from one frontage road to the other. You'll find a ton of these in Texas on the highway between uh, big system interchanges. The next example would be to allow traffic to U-turn when, for example, you have an incomplete interchange further down your highway network. Here's something of a local example to me. So here on the M8 motorway in the UK, now bear in mind this is left-hand traffic here, there used to be signage here to join the M77 from the M8 using this local road. In the past few years, they've removed that signage and instead route traffic further down the M8 to this underpass U-turn where you can join the M77 from the other side. This is to reduce traffic on the local road and they're able to reduce the number of lanes on the local road too. Now anybody local knows you can actually still use that route, but for everyone else following the signage and the sat-navs, they'll be using the U-turn and thus the traffic's reduced on that local road. In terms of you playing the game, if you build this as a standalone interchange without frontage roads or incomplete interchanges elsewhere, you'll get no traffic on your U-turn. You're simply not giving the Sims any logical reason to use it. So again, use it with the frontage roads or use it where you have restricted interchanges elsewhere on your network. Now there's a few variations to this. Uh, I'm going to show you how to build both an overpass and an underpass one. It's a super simple build to be honest. Uh, but you can build these on sunken highways too with some pretty nice results. These are all perfectly valid ways of doing it. Let's crack on with the build. I'm planning on completing this big five way interchange. So I'll start by pulling out the highway with a parallel road. Um, we'll keep the height at 10 meters. And I'll make a straight section here um, when I want to build the first one and we'll continue along with a continuous curve down to ground level. I want to show you one on a straight road and another on a little bit of a curve. Um, it's slightly different and it's just one thing to look out for when you're doing it. Eventually I'll hook up our frontage roads to these CD roads. CD roads are collector distributor roads. They're used for separating traffic at busy highway intersections or interchanges. I've drawn a medium six way road um, underneath our highway here perpendicular to the highway above. Using the parallel tool with a gap of 10, I'm going to create our three lane one way frontage roads. Next up is the U-turn. Just use the continuous curve tool, pull straight along, then go over to the other frontage road. We're looking for a 90 degree angle and just create a semicircle. It's as simple as that. You want to get to the top of the curve as close to that six lane road as possible without touching. You might need to try it a few times until you get to the point where you, you like the look of it, but nice and close, as close as you can. Um, and remember, this doesn't necessarily need to be a six lane road either, use whatever you want. So I created markers at 120 meters and we want to bump these sections between the marker and the U-turn to a four lane. Again, feel free to change the measurements with the ramps, use whatever lens, whatever lanes you want to build. As we upgraded to four lane after drawing our U-turns, it'll leave this little janky connection. No problem, just delete it, redraw the U-turns back in. Now I don't mind having to redraw here as we really need to get those curves in first and we upgrade that around their placement. Okay, that's much better. I'll do another marker further out at 136 meters and use the guideline to do a small marker on the overpass highway. I've decided to downgrade to two lanes between the markers, leaving a spare lane on the outside. Once they're all done, you'll be able to create a straight ramp from one spare lane to the next. I'll move on to the variant that uses the overpass ramp. Let's bring the highway down to ground level first and we'll extend the frontage roads like we created um, earlier using the parallel and continuous curve. Building this on a curved section will require you to use your own judgement on what looks good. I've used a six lane two way again and I've extended it out another six units um, either way on the frontage roads. On the lower frontage I've created a little marker roughly 180, again you don't need to use these exact measurements, um, use what you like but I've used 180 here. Once they're in I've done another little marker on the opposite uh, frontage road.
Don't get the frontage roads now as far as the markers. And we're going to bring the frontage roads up to the bridge section at 10 meters, 10 meters high. Right, we're going to aim to snap onto the bridge at roughly the same distance away from the highway as the roads already are. Let's get this lower section on a bit smoother. So simple curve road tool and again, try and keep those gaps consistent between frontage and highway. We'll use the same technique to get the U-turns in. Keep in mind, if you're building on a curve section, you'll probably not get exactly 90 degrees. It'll be a few degrees out, so I just wanted to show you that in case you're building on a curve. Uh, again, a little bit of trial and error might be required here, and we just want to get it uh, nice and close to the center. I'll use the guidelines from the markers here and create a highway marker at another 100 meters down the road. Like we did on the previous build, let's upgrade the four lanes here. And again, I'll downgrade the highway between the markers to help with the lane maths. Just like the other one, we can draw a straight line to connect the spare lanes you've created. So let's redraw the curves here. Okay, I couldn't leave those roads hanging here. Let's get it hooked up to the big interchange. I'll leave you a few cinematics of my network of Texas U-turns and my start of Downtown Island. Forgive me for the steep janky ramps, I'm just experimenting here. Um, as you can see, uh, I've got a series of them and they cope okay. They certainly struggle in rush hour, especially the weaving sections, but in fairness, so does just about every part of the city at that time of day. If you decide to build the interchange on a curved section, um, it just seems damned impossible to get consistent results on the ramp with the sunken highway, so keep that in mind. It can look a little bit messy, looks pretty good from height, but not so much when you're up close. So I think straight road sections for the Texas U-turns are the way to go in my opinion if you're going to go down the sunken highway route. If you need a guide for sunken highways, check out Imperator's excellent video from a few months back, pretty much have his everything covered for you. I don't know what it is about these little interchanges that I'm drawn to, but I'm going to keep making them. My next city is going to have a ton of them between my system interchanges. Are you guys convinced? Do you prefer the aesthetics of the overpass, the underpass, the sunken highway? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching as always guys, I really do appreciate it, hope you guys have a great day and uh, check out some more builds while you're here, have a good one, cheers.